Hi, my name is Amber McReynolds and I'm the Director of Elections for the City and County of Denver. Hello, and I'm Scott Cardenas. I am the Chief Information Officer for the City and County of Denver. And we're here today to talk a little bit about what Denver has done in terms of the approach to cybersecurity. Uh, some of our main focal points have been about the commitment to uh, resource it effectively, uh, the commitment from a cultural perspective in the city and county of Denver, um, and then also on the collaboration side, the coordination side, and the communication side. And we re really believe that all of those factors are the key to delivering appropriate service and securing our elections in a, in a meaningful way for our citizens and our voters in Denver. Uh, so with that, we want to talk a little bit today about how we've done that, um, how we've worked with various partners, and what steps we've taken to prepare um, for the elections that we've conducted in Denver. Uh, so first, um, before Election Day, and, and this really started um, as a collaborative effort with, with Scott and his team and, and the Department of Technology Services within Denver, um, I, as sort of the uh, director of the Elections Office, um, really partnered with uh, technology services years ago to start building out an effective project plan as well as putting the appropriate steps in place to adequately support the election process from a technology perspective, which includes cybersecurity. Uh, and so we really uh, took the Secretary of State's checklist and the acceptable user agreement, as well as added in various third-party uh, testing opportunities um, and put together a really good plan before every election that we utilize. Um, and this slide that you have in front of you really shows uh, some of the things that we've done. Uh, this includes validation of PC configuration, um, penetration testing, hardware and network, um, configuration testing, Wi-Fi scanning, and then the acceptable use policy that we sign collectively is submitted to the Secretary of State's office and we really go through and audit each of those items and make sure that the city is complying with those not only in the election side but also across any other systems that potentially impact the election office. Uh, so with that I think uh, Scott might want to talk a little bit more about, Great. about these steps. Yeah, so let me put this in context. Uh, and so technology services in the city and county of Denver is a shared service. So what that means is of the roughly 11 to 12,000 employees, uh, my agency consists of roughly 320 people uh, and it is the support organization. So we do a lot of resident facing technologies like 311. Uh, we have our denvergov.org presence and we have a mobile presence uh, uh, called PocketGov. And so along with that, we also have a TV station, Denver Channel 8. And so what I'm really building up and what I want to put in context is, you know, we're really structured to do a lot of the technology services on a year-round 24 by 7, 365. So we get a great opportunity uh, with Amber in the partnership with, with elections to really sit and have a focus on making sure we run a safe and secure election. Uh, the other thing I want to add for context is we do more than just cybersecurity. Over the presentation, we're going to elaborate a little bit more, uh, but the good news is in the partnership, uh, we do things, for example, we have a project manager from the project management office. Uh, we have a very good partnership that you know Amber works on with our Denver 311 call center so as residents call in and need information. And then as we get closer to the election to make sure that we've got a proper support group from our applications team, from our network team, from our information security, uh, as well as our application group. And so we make sure that we have a pretty robust presence uh, on the night of the election. And then this slide actually up here shows what it looks like on election night. Um, so this is essentially what our um, infrastructure and plan looks like in terms of security and cybersecurity reporting. Um, it shows our control center in the middle. Um, and we, through the um, HSIN network, connect to the Colorado Secretary of State, and we've created a collaborative monitoring tool that um, we work with the Secretary of State's office on and all of our partner agencies, as well as Jefferson County was involved in the last election. Um, and all, and you can kind of, this sort of demonstrates all of the various services, um, different departments, different teams that are involved in providing and securing our election um, uh, systems for election day, but also prior to that. Um, this also kind of shows some of the interactions with federal agencies as well as state. Um, and so I, Scott may want to talk a little bit more about 
some of those connections. Here. Yeah, what I love to talk about most about this slide is just representative, representative of all the work we did up front. And uh, it wasn't as easy as just plotting this diagram day one. We had to sit through and talk about what expectations were. We had to understand what was the interface with the state going to look at, uh, and basically how did we want to set up our security posture for that evening. So this is basically you know representative of the internal work that we did. And you can see from the Denver Elections Control Center out, you know that's basically some of the supporting process and infrastructure that we had in place. And then you can see some of the supporting groups. You, uh, for example, MSI SAC was one of them. And it also gives you uh, kind of a, a picture of indirectly how we communicated, for example, with uh, Homeland Security, FBI, as another example. And this, again, shows the elections network segmentation. So sort of uh, SCORE, which is sort of up in the right-hand corner, is the statewide voter registration system. That's how all of our vote centers connect and interact uh, to check voters into the process. Um, that goes across the internet portal, the state's internet portal, and then you can see there it comes to us. So that's kind of the sort of broader, um, higher level network configuration. Um, any other county would be uh, sort of in, in place of where Denver is. And then the part that we can control within the city um, kind of shows down uh, towards the bottom of the screen. And this is really more than just about the voting system. And what we've tried to show here is um, our signature verification software also goes through penetration testing. Um, any of our other um, networks, in addition to sort of the ballot counting, and, uh, which is air gapped, any of those other networks are also included when we um, do the third party and the penetration testing prior to the election. Yeah, and what I like to talk about is, for example, this is a good representation, but it starts to put, you know, the easy part was drawing the picture, and the tough part is making sure when you kind of agree on the model or structure what it looks like, what I want to talk about or introduce is we go through prior to an election and do a validation process. So we actually have, for example, security analysts who will walk, uh, you know, the, the election space to make sure if we said something's locked, it's locked. If we said it was air gapped, it's air gapped. Uh, and we, this is where we do some proactive uh, testing as well ahead of time in the night of for things like a rogue Wi-Fi network and those type of things. So once again, a uh, great picture, you know, very simple. And I also just wanted to add on a lot of the validation work that happens pre and night of. This slide shows some of the monitoring technologies that we uh, had deployed last year and that we've had deployed in previous election cycles as well. Um, so the Homeland Security Information Network, um, we had access to that. We were sharing information from sort of across that portal and, and with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, SCORE is uh, our statewide voter registration system. So we actually, through the Secretary of State's partnership, were able to monitor network performance, even in the city and county of Denver, and then out to all of our vote centers. So we actually have a really interesting map that kind of shows um, the status of all the vote centers and how how operations are working on election day. Um, solar winds and op five. Um, well, if you want to yeah, <laughs> you know, I made the comment to Amber offline, and if you're out there watching and you're a, you know, election official, you're a technologist, once again, you know, given the partnership, what I like about this is you can imagine as I uh, and my group watches cybersecurity for the city throughout the year, you know, I have significant asks from a budget perspective for different tools or services, et cetera. And what the partnership has allowed me to do, you're getting kind of a glimpse of some of the tools that we use just to keep the city secure year round. And the fact that now we've got this, you know, additional business case for election and it's just, you know, it's economies of scale and more efficient use of spend in the city uh, that we have the partnership and we can actually, you know, use tools that we already own and operate and then we tailor them specifically for the election process. And so uh, this is a good representation of just some of those tools and being able to leverage the spend in the city and county of Denver. And I will point out WebEOC that's on here, um, that is, uh, supports our operations center. Any um, activity that happens in the field, the election judges call that in or record that in the WebEOC system. And that is actually our emergency management system for the city. So we just set up a elections event as part of that emergency management system. It doesn't cost us any additional resources at all. Um, and actually, come to find out, I think most jurisdictions across the country use WebEOC for um, emergency management purposes. So this is a really good tool for election offices to, to potentially leverage that may cost them little to nothing to uh, deploy. Yeah. And I wanted to add one thing to this slide too. So one of the things, at least for the last election, which was uh, 
uh, November of 16. One of the other tools in our toolbox uh, that we're starting to get uh, more familiar and comfortable with is, you know, how do we monitor social media? And that's somewhat implied in this slide, but I want to talk about, I think, uh, an exciting thing that we're going to be able to do in the future is also keep an eye on social media feeds leading up to in the night of the election. And we were able to do some of that with this last election, and it's a powerful tool unto itself. But uh, once again, just a great example of how we're leveraging a complete tool set of things we do year-round, and we're able to, uh, you know, refocus uh, on the election itself. And some of the monitoring technologies continued. So one of the things that we've had for many elections is a bridge line. Um, so that's a really good suggestion for um, other election officials is make sure you have an emergency bridge set up prior to election day. So if you do have an incident or you need to get multiple people from various agencies online to talk through an issue, you have that set up. So that's kind of a really good obvious um, tactic that can be deployed easily. A listserv, again, identifying those key people that need information and making sure that that uh, email listserv is set up in advance. A list of names and cell phones. So we actually have this electronically, but we also create a uh, sort of uh, live copy binder that has all this information in the event that there is a massive sort of um, outage on our computers in the office. We'll still be able to get a hold and still be able to communicate with folks. Um, Scott mentioned SMS text messaging, um, and then also just face-to-face -face status um, check-ins with, within the op center itself. And I just want to add, you know, uh, the nice thing is I've, I think I've been roughly through uh, four elections with Amber and her team. And what I can say is I've seen it evolve over time. And I think when you look at this slide and you see this data, it's brief, but it's telling because it just goes to show the lessons learned from the prior elections and just a more real-time collaborative uh, engagement, uh, you know, the night of the election. And that was my takeaway. Like I said, I've seen them all run very well. And, you know, these bullet points are really representative of we had probably the most dynamic real-time communication and status uh, that we've seen, at least in the elections I've been involved with. <laughs> so, so, so this was one, uh, you know, on a prior slide, Amber talked about the HSIN or the uh, Homeland Security uh, portal link. And this is just a real-time view that the uh, information security team had the night of the election and was able to see, you know, real-time data in a secured manner and be able to collaborate at the same time. So the nice thing, some of these tools, if you can't really collaborate real-time or have a discussion, and you can see in the lower left where the, we have the ability to have some chatting, et cetera, and you can see who's logged on. But this was powerful because, you know, at the night of the election when Amber's, you know, out walking around and her team are very busy, uh, this, you know, would, would potentially empower me to, you know, do that uh, special follow-up if needed, you know, if something were to pop up and then... Yeah, and the chat log in the bottom, and this actually shows this on there, there's um, Trent Parker and Trevor Timmons from the Secretary of State's office are, are providing information on here. So this is a, a cross-agency chat log. They can communicate that way. We also at the same time had the conference bridge set up so that there was also the verbal communication in addition to the chat log um, that everyone could sort of see and communicate on. <laughs> and my takeaway is what you don't see there is chaos. It was a very well-run evening. You see the mayor, uh, Michael Hancock, there in the, in the uh, lower right. And, and the nice thing is all the months and weeks of planning led to a very well-run, efficient night where nobody's running around, and, and it was very organized. And, you know, we said it on the front end, but I think it's worth as we start to, you know, wrap up this presentation. I can't highlight enough just the importance of having uh, an open dialogue and making sure you have a good partnership. Uh, we were talking offline. You know, sometimes there are challenges, and it's nice when you have a partnership to go through the good times and learn from the bad times. And to me, when I look at this slide, I just see... Uh, I see a calm, well-run evening, and that's, the thing, that's what stands out the most for me. And I think in summary, this um, again shows the commitment that the city and county of Denver has made to this issue, um, and then also the collaboration, the coordination, and the communication are really the key factors in making um, this effective and make it work for uh, serving our voters and serving the citizens of the city and county of Denver. Thank you. Thanks.